Good morning to you. Welcome to your bite-sized word of encouragement and empowerment and to equip you to live today well and every day after this day. I did a session on E-Thursday yesterday afternoon and I spoke about Isaiah 54. And if you missed it, I would suggest you go and listen to it. We took all 17 verses in Isaiah 54 because it's a powerful prophetic word given to the people of Israel in the time, just coming out of captivity and some really amazing promises God had given them. But we can bring these promises today into today's church. It applies to the church today and to you and I. But there, there were two things that I mentioned in here that I want to cover a little bit, just because I couldn't really get into it. And one of the things that we have realized is there are a lot of believers who live their lives according to a belief system that they've developed out of their experiences, good or bad, mostly bad. So when things, when they pray for things or they, they, they hear a prophecy and they trust God for something and it doesn't work out for whatever reasons those things don't work out, they develop a belief system that God is allowing things in their lives to transform them, to shape them, to make them people of destiny that they're supposed to be. And the word does not say that. The word says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. It's the word of God that transforms us and the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives that shapes us and makes us more like Jesus. Your hardships are, are going to bring out the issues in your life, your life and the things that need to be changed, but it doesn't mean God is allowing it intentionally so that you can be changed. And um, so there are two, there's a scripture in Isaiah 54 that says here, after God has given them some amazing promises, um, of increase and their descendants inheriting the nations and making desolate cities inhabited and then God begins to reveal his identity to them in verse 5 and he says your maker is your husband the Lord of hosts is his name your redeemer is the holy one of Israel and he's called the God of the whole earth so God here is reminding them of who he is he's this powerful God he's this compassionate and merciful father he's a husband protector to them and he's promising all of these things. And then he says further on, he says in verse uh, 10, he says, For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. And that is a big thing. If, if you have developed a belief system out of your bad experiences, then you will believe, it will be easy, easy for you to believe that when things don't go right, when it looks as if God isn't answering your prayers, when you feel depressed, when you get sick, when your house, you lose something in your house, then it's God allowing it to teach you to trust Him or allowing it so you can develop more faith. It's hearing the Word of God that brings faith not your bad experience. And so when God said, yeah, my covenant of peace shall not be removed, my kindness will not be uh, depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. This is a promise, an everlasting promise that God made to, to his people and which continues throughout church life until we go to be with God. That his covenant of peace shall not be removed. And what is God's covenant of peace? It's this shalom. It's not just peace where you feel good because everything is going well in your life. God made a covenant, shalom peace, which means health, welfare, restoration, nothing missing, nothing broken. And there are a few other things in there that maybe you can look up. This is your homework. But if we believe that God is allowing things in our lives which go against his covenant of peace, then it means we've missed it somewhere because God doesn't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. So take a look at your life. What is it in your life that is outside of the covenant of peace? What is it? I measure everything by John, Jesus' words in John 10.10. 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that they may have life and life in abundance. The abundant life, the God kind, the God quality, and God quantity of life. That's what Zoe life is. That's what the abundant life is. So the God quality and the God quantity of life is not when God is looking at me and thinking, oh, she needs some more faith. 
she needs to learn to trust me some more. So let me allow some hardship in her life that's going to develop some trust and some faith in her life. That's not how God operates. So then here's the other one. Verse 15. Um, here he says in verse 14, In righteousness you shall be established. Righteousness is your identity in Christ. You have made, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. You are in right standing with the Father because of the price Jesus paid at the cross. So that establishes, establishes us in our identity. So when the devil tries to oppress you, when the devil tries to bring fear on you, um, God says in this promise that in righteousness you will be established. You will not fear You'll be far from oppression. The devil's going to try, but you remember who God says you are, and you remember who he says he is to you, and you're established. Then it says in verse 15, now this is a big one, Indeed, they shall surely assemble. The enemy's going to try and set lies, lie to you, accuse you, oppress you, make you feel heavy, make you feel discouraged. And he says, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. And some people believe that God allows accusations to come their way, people to lie about them, people to oppose them. They do oppose you, they do lie about you, they do come against you, but it's not God sending them to teach you something. It's coming from the enemy's camp and God says, you have authority, you have an identity in Christ, deal with it, take authority over, the li over those lies because it says in verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So there's a scripture in Proverbs 16 verse 7. If you believe that every time people come against you, that it's God allowing it to teach you something, get that thinking out of your head. It's the devil trying to discourage you and get you down. In Proverbs 16 verse 7, it says, yeah, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's totally opposite to believing that your enemies are sent by God to teach you something. God can make even your enemies to be at peace with you. So be encouraged with that today. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are covered. There's a covenant of peace that belongs to you that you need to take hold of. Like hearing that you've inherited something. You have to go and claim it and take it and walk in it, live it, enjoy it. Enjoy the covenant of peace that God made with you. And don't entertain the lies that God is allowing things in your life to make you who he, you need to be. He knows how to work with you. He knows how to be good and gracious and kind to you. And believe that today, that God is good.